we are here at the business show and I am wanting to bring to you, our mission is really to bring to you diverse individuals who are doing serious work, who are on their mission and, and they're really about doing good sound business and reflecting that diversity. So we've been talking to a bunch of guys today and today we wanted to bring you this lady who I was just about to let you do the introduction, she beat me to it. So Katie, how Kate, are you doing? Kate, Kate. I'm fine. Thank okay. You. So thank you. pleased to meet you. Thank you. Thank so you can you much. say your full name because you're from Nigeria and I want them to be able to hear okay. the full Nigerian Absolutely. accent, the fullness. All right. My name is Kate Gurebu. I'm the author of the book Triumph in the Midst of Adversity. I'm the director and CEO of Triumph in the Midst of Adversity.com Limited. A company found where we help people to understand the adversity and able to turn your adversity to triumph. Wow. We also host two transformative events here in London. One is Empower to Fulfill Your Potential and Key to Unlock Your Potential, where we help you with your mindset, understanding that obstacles are opportunities and giving you the key strategies and the key to unlock your potential event to help you to move you from where you are to where you want to be. Wow. Okay, I just need to sit down right there. I mean, I think we just, we just done it. So, what has inspired you, Katie? I mean, I just love what you're about. Obviously, you didn't just get here. And, and what you were sharing, what I picked up is that you arrived at this point through some adversity. So, we all know that some people go through adversities and they crush and crumble. What was your, if you don't mind sharing, what was your adversity and what was it that you possessed that allowed you to approach this or to recover from this in ways that most wouldn't? Right. My adversity were, were just several. For some people, they go through maybe one or two adversity, but I was going through you know, several you know, challenging situations at the time. Okay. I moved from Nigeria to Ireland and uh, when I was in Nigeria as a young lady married with little, you know, little babies, life was fun. You get on the flight, you know what the life of a cabin crew or an airstays is. You get on the flight, it's fun music, you enjoy yourself, you get into the hotel room, come make sure my baby is fine and I go to the gym, go in the jacuzzi and have a great time. And it was all fun, but when I got to a stage in my life, when I arrived in Ireland, I had my baby girls, twin girls, which I actually prayed for and I was so excited but shortly after two exactly two months and three weeks later something happened suddenly and my daughter was given medication which she reacted to antibiotics augmenting work and that really really you know brought a lot of developmental delay for my daughter that was really challenging for me at that time I was also waiting for my residency as an, you know, for you migrated from your country, you know what it is, yeah. with no documentation, you're waiting for the process to go through, and you have the twin babies, you know, one of them having a, 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 a overdose and taking her to the hospital. She was wrongly diagnosed for epilepsy, and that actually worsened the situation. Wow. From a little shake, she went to three seizures. You know, that was really challenging for me. And in the process of that as well, on one of the hospital visits, they requested the twin sister have to attend the hospital with her as well, as a procedure in the hospital. Now when she came, on another visit we went, they said they have to check her, and they said she's got more and more of the heart. And guess what? When further investigation was carried out, carried out the doctors realized that she's got the biggest hole in her heart in medical history. What? Which can only be corrected by open heart surgery. I couldn't really the hole. And the thing I thought it was something minor when they said she's got more of the heart. And they said it could be innocent mumbo. I said, but what's that? Could you just investigate more? to see what the, you know, the situation was, and that was it. So that really, you know, was really challenging, as if my walls were crumbling at that time, and I was praying for God to, you know, help the situation, because going to the hospital was actually making my situation worse, because my children, my daughter moved from a little shake to severe, you know, really dread, to, you know, twitching eyes, oh my God. I wake up in the morning sometime, and actually, 
felt if my dream should be my life yes, and, my, and, my, I, and my life like experience should be my dream, dream so I can wake, wake up, up from it. You don't understand? <laughs> yeah, I Actually, so I said, what is what? this? Crazy. I was praying for my children to be well. And, and I'm going to the hospital for help. I'm telling you. And I'm, I'm getting the opposite. I'm telling you. And as this? I was praying, God said to me, I should encourage and support people. I'm like, I'm praying for my God to tell me to start a show and encourage and support people. Yeah. I said, oh my God, I forget money for that show. I don't have money to put on TV. But after a while, I started it on YouTube. And guess what? I loved it more than even the microbiology and the biomedical science thing I was pursuing at the time. So now, the book he told me to write in 2007 when my children were going in and out of hospital, he got to a time in the Galway Hospital. We actually have a room that's almost permanent kept for us because it's big for me and my twin girls. Wow. Unbelievable. And he said, I should write a book, Triumph in the Maze of Adversity. I'm like, what is the triumph? I know I'm in adversity, but where's the triumph in the person? I just forgot about it. I, I didn't write a book. One day, I got this you know, message, so where is the book? I got the revelation, so where is the book? Holy Spirit was speaking to me, so where is the book you were asked to write? I said, oh my God, I didn't write any book. I've even forgotten the title, by the way. And after a while, it reminded me, it said, it's triumph in the midst of adversity. I wrote it down so I don't forget, but I didn't write it as well, because I was pursuing something different. And by this time, your girls are well, right? Well, right? They're not well yet. They're still going in and out of us. So I was pursuing my career when the God said to the thing. I was pursuing a career as a microbiologist. My career, my desire was to work as a biomedical scientist so I could go back home as well and set a diagnostic laboratory to help people as the mortality rate in Nigeria is, you know. So that's the way that you wanted to help, not, what, not, the, way, not the way that God, God wanted, wanted me to help. help. Absolutely. Oh, I just wanted to check on that. Absolutely. Okay. And as I was going on that path, it was becoming, you know, a lot of stumbling blocks. I'm like, what is this? The more you try, the more I said, what? What is this? I kept on going until one day I realized that I asked myself, the work that you want to do, if you're paid three times the salary, will you, would that make you happy? And guess what? The answer was no. The answer was no. And I said, then what are you doing here? That was when I realized I was not pursuing my dream. I was pursuing a goal based on what I studied in the university and my experience and my and my education almost robbed me of my dream wow. of Did my purpose. That? So ladies and gentlemen, yeah. is your education robbing you of your dream? Are you being so stubborn that you won't even get out of your own way? Because that's what you had to do, right? Absolutely. Wow. Because sometimes we it's good to go to uni, but most of the time when we go to university we don't actually go there to study what we are passionate about, what we love doing. I love supporting people. I love encouraging people. I never knew there's a way I could do it as a job. I just thought people say, okay, thank you. I thought I was just a nice person. I never knew there's something I could do there's to actually purpose. help people more. There's a purpose. You know? So that's, it's really, really, it's been a, you know, an interesting wow, journey. And now story. I'm so glad that I'm able to turn my adversity to triumph. Now I'm a public speaker. I'm a coach, I'm, a, I'm an author, and I'm a strategic consultant. So now I can use my life, my strategies, my eight key strategies that I shared in my book, Triumph in the Midst of Adversity, to help people to overcome their adversity Fantastic. and to have, and most importantly, to have a better understanding of adversity. And what it is, and I know that you I have about redefined it. adversity. It's not about pain. Because the adversity definition in the dictionary, I just felt this is unfair. I read it and said, this is not fair. Adversity, there is pain in it, I agree with you, but it's not all about pain. Adversity is indeed opportunity. Absolutely. So if you have a better understanding of what adversity is, which I've redefined as, adversity is the process that you and I have to go through to able to be strengthened and to prepare us for our next level of success. Wow. So it's a situation you go through to strengthen you and prepare you for your next level of success. It's wow. not just only about the pain. So let's flip that. What that means is that if you don't have any pain in your life, then what you're actually saying to life is that you don't want to go to the next level. That's it, that's it. Now, can you deal with that? <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a quick, again, is your life very comfortable? Because if your life is very comfortable, then that means you don't want to go to the next level. That's it. Now, the next level has got even more success than you're experiencing now. So the choice is yours. Kate, 
I want to thank you. But before I do and end this interview, I want to ask you, can you let the people know, how can they get in touch with you? Before I say that, I also want to let you know, there's a reason why I redefine adversity. Okay. Because when you are going through difficult situations, guys, don't dwell on the pain alone. And don't, you know, don't sweep it under the table. Embrace it. Because Oprah Winfrey said that where there is no struggle, there's what? There's no, there's no forward movement. No growth. You say no growth. So what I want to say to you here is this. If you want to get in touch with me, you go on my website. It's www.triumphinthemaceofadversity.com. And my email address is info at triumphinthemaceofadversity.com. And you can check me out on Instagram. It's katyrebo underscore public speaker. And you can check me on Facebook. It's Kate Osho dash Wow. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Dada. You. I Thank really you. appreciate you.